All right, mate. So you've just built your brand new gaming PC and you are either ready to flip it or use it, but have no idea what to do. Don't worry. Hank, the PC building wiener dog has got you covered. The first thing you need to do is create a bootable installation drive onto a USB. For this, you will need a USB that is at least eight gigabytes in size and no larger than 32 gigabytes. These are readily available for cheap on Amazon. You can usually get a pack of five for around $15 like this one here. Before you go to install Windows, go to your USB drive, right click on it, hit the format button, and then make sure it is set to FAT32. If it is already set, great. If not, just set it and click start down below and it will reformat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Once it is properly formatted, go to Google, type download Windows 11 and you should see this link pop up here. The link is down below if you need it. Once inside, go down to create Windows 11 installation media, click download now and it should download the media installation tool. Once it has finished downloading, open the file up, accept the terms and conditions, make sure it is set to Windows 11 in the language and edition, select USB flash drive ours is in our f drive you can see where it is labeled up the top in your usb folder right here click next and it will start downloading Here is the PC that we have just finished building. Ain't she a beauty, mate? Nope. And we have the little builder right next to it. Good old weenie dog, Hank Edwards. What? Before we power her on, we will need a hardwired keyboard and mouse. Just get one from Amazon. They're cheap as chips over there, mate. Make sure your PC is connected to a monitor and power that baby on. Very nice. Once it is powered on, if you are installing it onto a brand new drive, it should go straight into the Windows installation file. If you are reformatting an old drive, which is what we are doing here today, as it's booting up, smash the delete key like there is no tomorrow, like we are doing right here, and it should go straight into the BIOS. Nice. This next step is BIOS specific. We have an MSI motherboard, but what you will need to do is select the bootable drive as the USB. So you can see here we have our Clev 1TB SSD as the bootable drive. Just click the USB icon right next to it, drag it in front and it will boot off your USB with Windows 11 onto it. If you have another motherboard, have a look online to see how to do this if you're having trouble. Once the PC restarts, the Windows installation file should boot and it should look like this. Nice. Once you are in, select your language and then select your keyboard. Then it will ask you to install Windows 11, agree with everything, click next and then give it a second. If you were using a new drive, it will look slightly different. After you click install Windows, it will ask you to insert a product key for Windows. Do not worry about it right now. Select I do not have a product key. I'll run you through how to get Windows for under $20 later in this video. Next, it will ask you to select your image. Just go with Windows 11 Home or Pro. 99% of people do not need Pro and you might save a few bucks going with Home. The PC we are using for this tutorial has Home on it, but feel free to add Pro if you want. Accept the license terms and then you will be met by this screen asking you to select the location to install Windows. What the hell is even that? If this is a brand new drive, you should just see your primary partition, which is our one terabyte version. It should be around 930 gigabytes. It's never the full size. If this is a used drive like we have here, you will see all of these other partitions. Select delete partition for all of them other than your USB and you should be left with it looking like this. Let's go! FYI, this is how it should look if you have a fresh drive installed as well. If you have multiple SSDs installed, you will see multiple hard drives. Just select the hard drive you want to install it on. Click next and Bob's your uncle mate. Windows will start installing. Give her a couple of minutes. It might take up to about 10 or 20 minutes for it to install. Just chill out in the meantime. And there she is, mate. Windows is now on the PC. That's what I'm talking about. The next step is very important, especially for PC flippers. Select your country and your keyboard layout, and then the dreaded let's connect you to a network message appears. I'm so scared right now. We do not want to connect right now. Otherwise, it forces you to sign in using an online Windows account, which we don't want associated with a computer that we are about to sell. Fear not, mate. Hank is here to help. Oh, yeah. All you need to do is hold Shift F10, just like we are doing here on the world's worst keyboard. Then this administration window will pop up. Double click on it and type OOBE backslash bypass NRO. I have it on the screen here and it is linked down below. You can just copy it right in.
the PC will reset, put your country and keyboard back in, and now you'll get the screen, and Karen is your auntie, mate. You can now click on I don't have internet. Thank you so much. <laughs> Give your computer a name. We will call this the 3060 Ti based on the GPU that it has. Make sure you leave the password blank so whoever is buying it can access the computer without a password. Next, turn all of these features off. This is used solely so Bill Gates can spy on you. Oh, hell no. If the client wants to turn them on later, they can, but they are mostly useless features. After that, the PC will give you a friendly hello, say hello back, then give it a couple of minutes, and Denise is your old sister. Huh? Windows will be fully installed and you will be good to go. And here she is, mate. What a thing of beauty. The first thing you will need to do is grab an ethernet cable and plug it in so you have internet. Once we are connected, go to settings and type updates and check for updates and all of these bad boys will be ready to install. Let that go in the background. Some of these may fail if they aren't necessary, so don't panic if you see that. Next, we will download our graphics driver. We have an NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti, so we need to download the NVIDIA app. Just type it into the search bar, click the link and select download now. Nice. The link will be in the description if you need it. If you have an AMD graphics card, just type the card in drive after. So for example, 7800 XT driver. Click right here and go down. You can just download the GPU driver by itself if you want, but I would download the Adrenaline Edition software just so you have it. It's not bad to have. If you have an Intel GPU, just type Intel GPU driver into the search bar. So for example, Intel B580 driver, Click here and download the drivers and install them. Wow. Back to our NVIDIA app. Once it is installed, you can install Game Ready Driver or Studio. Just do Game Ready Driver, mate. I have that even on my work rig. In the grand scheme of things, it won't matter that much anyway. Then download this fella, let it download, and then select install. During the GPU driver installation or during the system update, the screen will probably flicker as it sets the resolution of your monitor. Don't panic, mate. This is completely normal. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Next, we have to install all of our other drivers. You can download these manually one by one from your motherboard's website, but most motherboard manufacturers have softwares that allow you to download and update them all at once. MSI has this driver utility installer that triggers when you first set up your PC. ASUS, for example, has their utility driver, which you can download and continuously update as you have the PC running. If you are unsure what your motherboard has, just search how to do it for your board on YouTube and you should be as good as gold. <laughs> yeah, boy. We are going to click next on driver utility installer, accept the agreement. Now, whatever you do, do not install everything. A lot of this is bloatware and will make your computer run slower. Yeah! All you need is your chipset driver, which will be AMD or Intel, Realtek PCIe drivers, Bluetooth drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, and your HD Universal drivers. Do not install Norton or McAfee, mate. They are absolutely terrible. You don't need any of this other nonsense either, mate. All of this stuff can be downloaded by the client if they want it. It isn't necessary. Let these install, and Brian is your brother, mate. What? You'll be good to go. All right, mate, now that you have your GPU drivers and other drivers installed and your Windows is up to date, it will require a restart. So restart your PC. As you can see down here, this one says that it has an error. Ignore it, mate. It'll go away when you restart your PC. And we are back. Let's check our task manager to make sure everything is good. We have our Ryzen 7 5700X3D. 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked at our RAM speed, which is 3200 mega transfers per second. A lot of the time it won't be at the right speed when you first install Windows. I'll show you how to fix that after this. We have our one terabyte SSD M.2 drive. It'll never fully be one terabyte. If you see 930 gigabytes, don't panic. The ethernet is working and our GPU is showing up here, the RTX 3060 Ti. So everything is looking good so far. Let's restart this beast and go into the BIOS. Just click the restart button and while you're waiting for it to load up, absolutely start smashing the delete button as hard as you're smashing that like and subscribe button for this video. Do it! And boom, baby, we are into the BIOS. So the first thing you want to do is enable your XMP profile. Ours is already enabled. Again, this is motherboard specific, but with MSI, you just click up here and it's good to go. Yeah, baby. If you can't figure out how to do it on your other motherboards, just look it up on YouTube and it should tell you how. 
The other thing to check is find your search bar and type in resize and make sure resizable bar is enabled. It'll help add a tiny bit of performance to most cards, but it's very important for things like Intel graphics cards. It's always good to make sure this is enabled. Again, if you're having trouble finding how to do it on your specific motherboard, just look it up on YouTube. There's tons of tutorials. So we have a pretty up-to-date BIOS last updated in late 2024. So it's not the end of the world if you aren't updating it on an AM4 motherboard before you sell it, for example. But if you know how to do it, you probably should and it is easier than people make it out to be. Just type your exact motherboard into Google. So we have the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. Once inside, go to drivers and downloads and go to BIOS. Find the latest version. So here we have April 2025. So brand spanking new. Download it onto an empty flash drive formatted to FAT32. That's at least 8 gigabytes and no more than 32 gigabytes. After that, place the USB into a port at the back of the motherboard. Some motherboards have a dedicated USB port, but that's more for flashing with no power. This motherboard, it's fine to just throw the USB anywhere. Reset your PC and absolutely smash that delete key to get into the BIOS. Again, this is very motherboard specific. So look up a tutorial for your exact board here you just press m flash and let it reboot it will go onto this screen find your usb select the bios file and it will go onto this next screen for the love of god make sure you're on a stable power source or there isn't lightning or storms going on outside this will take about five to ten minutes and may shut on and off throughout so don't panic mate just let her rip and come back when she's done And she's good to go, mate. All up to date. Too easy. So here we are with Hank Edwards, mate, and everything is looking good, but we have to activate Windows for the client. What? Now, do not buy these $1,000 official Windows keys, mate. Oh my God. They are ripoffs, and there are a lot of great third party websites where you can get window keys for cheap as chips. What? The site we use for Windows 11 keys is GBG Mall. We are not sponsored. This is just what we've used since the dawn of time. There are a few others out there pushed by some creators, which I'm sure are just as good. Just make sure you use the correct website. The link for this will be in the description below because there are a few impersonator ones which are scams. <gasps> we have literally purchased so many keys from this website that we have unlocked the VIP zone where you can get Windows 11 Pro for 15 bucks. Bruh. Crazy deal, mate. You'll unlock it eventually during your flipping career, I'm sure. Now make sure you purchase the key that you installed on your computer. So if you installed Windows 11 Pro, buy Windows 11 Pro keys. If you install Windows 11 Home, buy Windows 11 Home keys. If you buy the wrong one, it won't work. I've done this before and I contacted customer service and they actually gave me the right key. So that was very kind of them, mate. We love you, GBG Mall. You can see when we go down below and click Windows 11 Home, which is what we need for this particular PC, that there's already a discount code of 20%. So just click it to copy. Go to buy now, apply your code, and it goes down to 23 bucks, mate. We actually have another code down here, which takes it down to about 20 bucks. <laughs> Again, we are not sponsored. This isn't an affiliate key. I can't remember where we got this code from, but it has worked forever and usually costs around 20 bucks once we put it in. We use a credit card to purchase this. Just put your details in. Once it's processed, go to my purchase orders. And here you can see we have tons of keys already purchased over the last few months. Click on view keys and codes. Your code key will be right here. Go down to your start menu, go to activation settings, press change product key, put your key in and boom, you have a lifetime activated versions of Windows 11 Home Pro for $20. What a time to be alive. For benchmarking the PC, we use Furmark, which is able to run both your CPU and GPU at 100% utilization for as long as you'd like. It is a great way to test temperatures and stability. Just type Furmark into Google, click the home page, scroll down and hit download. Download the zipped version of this file and extract it onto your desktop and she's good to go. Great success. When you go to open it up, Microsoft Defender tries to stop you. Don't worry, it's safe, mate. Liar! Just click more info than run anyway and she should open up. Here you can run CPU burner, which will run your CPU at 100% utilization. And then in the top right corner, just click run and it'll throttle your GPU to 100%. Once it starts, this big furry image will be on the screen. Look to your middle left of the screen and you'll see the temperature of the GPU. We usually test it for an hour and if it stays under 80 degrees, you are golden. Technically, these things can run a bit hotter, up to 90 or even 100 degrees, but 80 seems to be the ideal temp of the PC Master Race, mate. For the video purposes, we are just going to run it for 10 minutes.
And she's perfect, mate. 70 degrees and very stable. Good times and a big thumbs up. Next, we are going to test the CPU. We did this on a different PC because we flipped the other one and I lost the footage of this. This baby has a Ryzen 5600 and a 3060 Ti. For this, you need to download hardware info to see your CPU temperatures. Just type it into Google and use the free download version and choose any of these windows. Click the installer and let it run. Once you're inside, go up to the top and click sensors and scroll down and you will see your CPU temperatures. Start CPU burner and your temperature should skyrocket as the CPU runs under 100% load. Yeah. Again, this is the worst case scenario for the CPU. The PC would rarely run the CPU at 100% load for an extended period of time, so don't freak out if it gets a bit hot. Ideally, under 80 degrees is good, but for much hotter CPUs like the 14900K, for example, you may be hitting 90. While these benchmarks are good for peak temperatures under load, the thing I usually do is ask the client what games they want to play or I'll benchmark with things like COD, Marvel, Marvel Rivals and Fortnite and make sure I can play for a few hours on each without temperature skyrocketing or the PC shutting off. And that's gonna do it mate, this PC is ready to flip and ready to play. Let's give a hand to the weenie Mr. Hank, put her here mate. What a good boy, here is a treat for your efforts. Do it. If there is anything you think I've missed, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, me and the weenie love ya. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Look at this distinguished gentleman.